Okay, play tectonics. Play tectonics. Forces of change. The internal forces of change. Um, we're focusing on play tectonics with this one. So, getting into it. Well, the first thing we need to do is discuss or define the term geology. Because a lot of what we'll be discussing with plate tectonics um, in this lecture falls under the term of geology. And geology is just the study of the Earth's physical features and history. And it comes from Latin. But the main thing you guys need to know is that geology is the study of the Earth's physical structure and history. And this is probably the next thing. This next graphic is probably just a review from middle school or even elementary school. And that is that the earth is made of three different layers. Okay, We live on the top layer, which is the crust. Um, right underneath the crust is the mantle. And inside of the mantle is the inner and outer core of the earth. They're made of lava and all that good hot stuff. So, I mean, so the crust, mantle, made of lava, um, and then the inner and outer core. And this is just everything for it. The earth is composed of three different layers. The technical definition of the core is the central layer of the planet. The inner core is the very center of the planet. It's super hot, but it is solid. Uh, the outer core, on the other hand, is, is a liquid, and it surrounds the inner core. The mantle is a layer of thick, dense rock right above the core. And the crust is where we live. It's the rocky shell that forms the Earth's surface. We live on the crust of the Earth. Now, plate movement. When we talk about plate movement in relation to the Earth, uh, we mean that the Earth's crust, um, where we live, the crust of the Earth, the surface of the Earth, is broken down into about a dozen different plates of rock that are called, uh, different slabs of rocks that are called plates. So when you think about where we live, we think about, Everything on top of these plates, the oceans, the continents, they're actually all shifting and they are on um, they're on plates and these plates are constantly moving. So the oceans and continents, um, once again, they ride atop these plates and these plates, they move in different directions. So we are all slowly moving. Not only are we slowly moving, but the oceans, the water, it's all slowly moving because we all sit atop of these plates that are on the earth, uh, make up the earth's crust. Now, plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is actually the title of this lecture. What exactly is it? I guess it would be good if I gave you a definition for it. Um, plate tectonics, that's just the term and that is used to describe um, how the plates move. The plates on the top of the earth move. And the magma flow, which is hot lava, which have created the movement or which have created the earth's physical features. So, just really, really simply breaking it down for you when we talk about plate tectonics, we talk about the plates that are make up the Earth's crust that are constantly floating, right? Um, and the lava or the magma flow underneath the plates. And it's this flowing of lava and the movement of the plates on top of the lava that is flowing that creates the Earth's physical features. And when we say physical features, we mean things like uh, mountains, volcanoes, folds, um, the, the rocks, the canyons, all those things, we'll get into it. And the movement of plates is believed to produce the Earth's physical, largest physical features, count, uh, continents, oceans, and mountain ranges, and they also create volcanoes and earthquakes. So we will focus on four major internal forces of change throughout this lecture. The, they are the colliding and spreading plates, folds and faults, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So this first graph is the example of a colliding and spreading plate. So these are when the, the plates that make up the Earth's crust, they collide and spread. Folds and faults is when, um, when the Earth's surface, the plates that make up the Earth's surface shift. And so you'll see the land actually shift up or down. Earthquakes, we're familiar with those right um, when the plates spread and volcanic eruptions these are things that occur when the magma that is underneath the earth rush to the top or underneath the crust that um that the plates floating on rushes to the top so one of the words that we'll focus on is subduction and what subduction is it's the process that went how it talks about how mountains form so it's the process of how mountains form 
and they form taking a look at this graphic it'll show you it shows how mountains form um, as the plates that are make up the ocean they slide under the plates that make up the continents and so this is a good example of this graphic you see the plate here that makes up the ocean crust it is sliding under the mountain okay it's sliding under the con or sliding under the continental crust and these things are believed to uh, to have created mountains this process of subduction is just believed to have created mountains a good example of this is the andes mountains the thing that i want you to to differentiate with su subduction if you want to put a star or anything next to it is that subduction is the process that when the plates slide underneath one another that mountains are formed and you'll see why i made that distinction in a second uh, accretion very similar to subduction okay uh, accretion is the process in which a sea plate which is a plate that the sea rests on slides underneath the continental plate but at this time instead of creating a mountain um, they create debris or or de debris or waste um, that causes the continents to grow outward so make sure you understand that the difference between accretion and subduction is that they both involve plates sea plates shifting underneath continental plates but with subduction mountains are created so with subduction mountains are created and with accretion um, mountains are not created the continents actually grow or spread outward colliding and spreading plates when we say that plates or collide or spread, it's just, just like what it sounds like, okay? You're taking a look at this graphic. Some of the plates that make up um, the earth, some of them are joined together. Now, when they spread apart, when they spread apart, um, that is what we call spreading. And it's the process where new land is created when the sea plates, they pull apart. And the lava underneath or the magma underneath the sea plates, because that is what the plates are resting on or floating on when they spread apart the lava underneath comes to the surface and this lava coming to the surface creates mountains uh, and volcanoes so it actually creates new landforms because once the magma cools it turns into rock and this is just another this graphic shows you the plate spreading and underneath the magma which is waiting to come up and this is actually also another example that shows a step-by-step -step plate spreading, land falling in, um, or you see it's the, slate, the plates are spreading. Um, you see the magma. You see the, the rock. You see it's being filled up. And as a result, after it spreads, um, you see what, what goes on there with the ocean crust because it, it's, it opens up into the water. And the fact that the magma goes into the water, it's cooled, but in the process of it cooling, we now have these mountain ridges or mountain ranges formed underneath underneath the water. Folds and faults. Now look, folds and faults, they occur when the mantle and the crust that make up the plates on top of the um, on top of the earth, they bend and break. Okay, so when they bend, because just like anything else, if they're floating and they're spreading apart and they're coming together and they're colliding, and if there's hot magma underneath, you can imagine that that can cause the ground underneath to shift. We know about this all the time, though, because when you look at things like earthquakes and all that good stuff. So folds occur when the plates um, move, and then they sometimes what occur is they'll squeeze on the earth's surface. So what will happen is that plates will move. And as a result of the moving, the land underneath the earth will buckle. And this we'll see with this forms. Um, you'll see it actually inside the rock. And this picture is actually an example of what the land that has been involved in a fold will look like. It'll actually buckle or make a wave. Looks like a wave to me. And this is an example of a mountain range where a fold occurred. If you can see, follow the cursor, you'll see where the land actually appears to move up and down. Or you can see where it folded. This is another example of people standing on a fold. Once again, follow the cursor. You can see that as a result of the land um, moving back and forth or colliding, you can see where the rock, instead of going straight, it is made kind of like a wave, kind of like a wave, um, a wave pattern. It's another example of a fold. It's another example, and this is actually a fault also, and I will go to, into the fault next. 
Now, when we talk about a fault, faults are different than folds. Folds are just when the ground, um, as a result of the plates colliding, the ground forms like a wave pattern or they scrunch up or spread out from one another. Faults are actually breaks or cracks in the earth's surface. And these are caused um, by plates when they grind or when they slide apart. An example of this is the San Andreas Fault. So a big way for you to just understand is that with a fold, you'll see the land making a wave pattern. And with a fault, you'll see actually the land separating kind of into two different levels. And this is it, or just completely separating. Now, faults, they're created or they're just cracks and breaks. And, and they're caused by the grinding. Uh, I'm sorry, sliding in place. We've already done this. Earthquakes. Everyone's pretty much familiar with what earthquakes are, right? Uh, earthquakes are just when the earth, violent movements by the earth, okay? Uh, they're caused by a couple of different things. They're caused by land being along fault lines. If the land underneath the fault lines, which is a riding the plates, riding on top of the magma shifts, you can have earthquakes. So these are sudden and violent movements of the plates along a fault line. And the ring of fire. Make sure you have this. The ring of fire is a name that scientists have given to a zone of earthquakes and uh, volcanoes. And they actually surround the Pacific Ocean. And they go everywhere from Kobe, Japan, to Los Angeles, and Cal to California, and San Francisco. So that these are known as the Ring of Fire. This is a graphic showing these earthquakes, these, these, um, this ring of earthquakes and volcanoes that go from Japan to the United States. So this is all part of the Ring of Fire. And once again, it's just a graph of the, it's just um, a line of active volcanoes and earthquakes, fault lines. Now, what are volcanoes? I've kind of mentioned them very briefly. Volcanoes are mountains that are formed by, um, by lava and open when the magma breaks through. And that, of course, that occurs when the magma breaks through from the surface as a result of spreading or a fault line. And volcanoes, they erupt. When the pressure from within, so if you can imagine underneath the magma, um, the earth is made up of a bunch of plates. The plates are floating on the magma. Now, the pressure from the magma, it's hot. It's, it's beyond hotter than anything we really can imagine. The pressure that is created by that intense heat sometimes causes cracks in the earth's surface or in the plates. Or when the plates spread apart, uh, that's when that magma is able to escape and that's when a volcano occurs. So that is when the volcano erupts, when they're actually able to escape from underneath the earth. That liquid hot magma is uh, able to escape from underneath the earth into the earth's surface. And the volcano erupts when the pressure of the magma inside the volcano gets so high that it actually makes its way to the earth's surface. This graph shows, this graphic is um, shows a volcano. We've all familiar with them. This is another graphic of a volcano. And this shows what it looks like. A volcano looks like from the inside. You can see the liquid magma forcing its way up to the top. Um, smoke, ash, fire, all those things occur. Now, Pangea, uh, that is, if you take a look at this graphic, this is actually Pangea. And this is what um, many scientists believe that the Earth looked like thousands of years ago. They believe that most of the continents that we talk about today in Earth, so North America, Europe, South America, Africa, Antarctica, Asia, that most of these continents are, were once part of one gigantic supercontinent called Pangaea. And they believe that over time, the movement of the plates or the fault line, the movement of the plates on the surface of the Earth, the movements of the plates, the plates away from one another, caused the shifting of the continents to what we now have today. And this graphic shows what scientists um, hypothesized what occurred, that we went from one gigantic continent to many continents as a result of the movement of the plates along the fault line of the Earth. What this is called is the continental drift theory. And the continental drift theory states that, that the continents were all once joined. Um, well, I guess this says 250 million years ago and have slowly drifted apart. At uh, the end, make sure that you fill out your notes guide, highlight the answers to your learning targets, and I will see you in class. Have a good evening.